Howdy folks, Jeff Sankstack here. I want to talk about how to use the motion effect with keyframes and keyframe interpolation to put clips in motion and have that motion appear to be natural. And we'll do that with two clips here. I've got a map and a photograph I'm going to put on top of the map. I'll load the map onto the uh, timeline and I want to stretch it out to about 15 seconds or so just so we have some time to play with it. And if you take a look at the map, here versus there, you can see that here it's very vertical, here it's not so vertical. That's because the sequence is 1024 by 768 and the map, if you look over here in the project panel, is a little bit wider than 1024 and quite a bit taller than 768. You can see that here by changing this from fit to let's say 25% and then simply clicking on the clip and that shows you its actual boundaries. That's how things work inside Premiere. It will center whatever a graphic you have or, or clip you have and just display the uh, size of the sequence in that centered area if the sequence size is smaller than the uh, clip that you're putting in there. So I'm going to move this guy around a little bit because I want to show the, uh, the well, we'll use this part here and I'll show the top part of the map for this demonstration. Just, just have a, a route for this person to take. Have it be sort of, I don't know, semi-logical here. So there's our map. And if I double click on the map and look at it in the source monitor, you'll see that it shows the whole thing. And the source monitor shows you whatever boundaries uh, the original uh, uh, the source object has and then the, the program monitor shows you how it's really going to look to your audience. Two different things there. Now let's take a look at the old photo. The old photo looks like that inside the source monitor but I, if I put it on the timeline and stretch it out to match the length of the clip below it you'll see that it's not as wide. You can see it's not as wide as 1024 over here and but a little bit taller than 768. And if I click on it See there are its bound. There's its bounding box with its handles right around the edge there. So we're going to want to position this clip on top of the map and move it around. Let me switch back to fit. First order business is to have the clip uh, be reduced in size and positioned to the place where I want it to end up, at least in the first part of the animation. That's typically how you work with keyframes when you're talking about motion. Is that you have you set up the the, the effect in terms of how you want things to be completed. You don't have to do it that way. It's just a sort of a, a, a typical way to do it. So I want to shrink it down in size. I'm going to open up the effect controls panel by selecting the clip. Open up the effect controls panel, and there's motion. If I open up the drop down uh, disclosure triangle, there you'll see that it has position scale and a few other uh, properties. We're going to work with position and scale only here. First order business is to get it scaled down. I could use the scale value here just by dragging it left or right, or I can just drag on here. No matter where I drag on one of these little uh, handles, I can't drag on, well, there isn't a handle, but where there's a handle I can drag it down. And notice that it, it changes in size uniformly. That's because uniform scale is checked over here. If I were to uncheck that, it would no longer say scale, it would say scale height and scale width. Or change it to height and width. And now if I were to change just the width, for example, that would happen, and we don't want that to happen, particularly with portraits. Not a good thing to do that with portraits, so we'll undo that and also switch back on the uniform scale thing, and we'll get that going again. All right, so I want to, let's say, have him about, be about that big when we're done. Have him kind of centered up here. And uh, that's, that's where I want him to end up, let's say, two seconds into the piece. So I'll go, or three seconds or so. There's about three seconds into the piece. And that's where we'll have them end up. So now I need to turn on keyframes for position and scale. To do that, I click the toggle animation switches here in front of position and scale. I when I click them, that will add a keyframe for each of those parameters, each of those properties. Because when you turn it on, that says, okay, put a keyframe there. And put the value that you've got currently selected here and associate that value with that keyframe. Click on the scale, and I put a keyframe there as well. Okay, so we've got these keyframe set uh, with these values. And if I were to change uh, the value by, let's say, changing the size or changing the position, the keyframes don't move or new keyframes don't appear because I'm making those changes on those keyframes. So the properties change within for, for those keyframes. So I'm not, I'm not adding keyframes. I'm just changing the properties in an existing keyframes. Now I'm going to go to the beginning of the clip. Now nothing should happen because these are still images. And I want to move the clip to where I want it to start, and I want to scale it down to how I want the scale to begin. I'm going to have it start from 
zero scale, zero percent, and have it grow up to this size. So I'm going to move it first, and when I move it, I'm go it's going to change the position properties. And when I when you change something, there were keyframes are turned on, and you have a current time indicator in a new place that automatically adds a new keyframe at that new place. So I'm going to move it, and the moment I move it, a keyframe is going to appear there. Boom. There we go. It's already appeared, showing a new position at this new time in the timeline in the clip. So I'm going to shrink it down as well. and That'll add a keyframe for scale. Bring it down to Ireland where this guy came from. Shrink it down some more. And that would be, let's say, how I would start this, except I want it to be scaled to zero. I can drag it like this to get the zero, or I can just drag scale down to zero. So now we've created our animation by sort of going backwards, starting where we're going to end up and then going to the beginning. And if I press pull the space bar for play, there you have the animation. Great. Now I want him to, let's say, continue down to Belarus. Let's say he moved from Ireland to Belarus. He didn't, but let's just say he did. So I'm going to position him, the, the clip, a little bit farther and let's say toward 10 seconds or so. And this will be, uh, the, you know, I want him to go from Ireland to here down to here. I'm going to want him to pause in the middle, but I'll talk about that in a second. So now I'm going to drag him down to Belarus, right about down there, and shrink him down to, that's a smaller size, but not zero. Have him sort of live there in Belarus. There you go. Now notice that when you um, add uh, another position keyframe, when you go beyond two keyframes, now you see that you have this little curve. Premiere Pro, by default, when you create a position where it has going from to, to more than two places, from one place to another, and then to someplace else, automatically creates a, a Bezier curve. In fact, it's a Bezier curve when you just have two points, but you won't see it as a Bezier curve because it's just a straight line. But when you have three points, you can see quite obviously that it's on a curve. And this is by default because the folks who created the Premiere figure that you want your motion to have sort of a natural look to it. You don't want it to be just uh, two straight lines. So it automatically creates what are called Bezier curves. And Bezier, Bezier curves are things that you can uh, adjust the shape of the curve, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. But what I want to do, instead of being Bezier curves, I want to show you what it looks like when it's not a Bezier curve, when it's linear. So I'm going to select the three position keyframes by marquee selecting them. I'm going to right click on them, and I'm go going to go to Spatial Interpolation. <coughs> Objects that move through space have an option to, called Spatial Interpolation. How do they behave when they move through space? And right now, Auto Bezier is the default um, mode that it uses, the, mo the default interpolation mode. I'm going to switch to linear. And that's going to make these straight lines here. Now it's going to go whoop, whoop, like a triangle. And so now instead of that nice smooth curve, it's going to whack and whack. And no, not very natural looking. OK, I'm going to undo that. Just I wanted to show you how that works. I'll undo that with Control-Z or Command-Z on a Mac, Control-Z on Windows. We're back to the Bezier curve. Now the Bezier curve <coughs> has what are called handles. It has uh, keyframes and handles, and boy, are they hard to see. But uh, once you kind of get a sense for how they work, then they'll be a little more logical. So each keyframe is marked by a little cross, a little diagonal cross. There's one down there, there's one up here in the middle, and there's one down here in the corner. This circle, this target, is the anchor point. <coughs> Excuse me. This little circle or that little target there is an anchor point. It's not a keyframe. It gets a little confusing. But as I move the clip around, you'll see that the anchor point is always in the center of the clip. That's the default location for the anchor point. And you can change the anchor point over here if you want to. But we're just keeping it in the default position in the center of the clip. So these other guys, though, those are the keyframes. They're little, little crosses. And you can barely see them. So I'll zoom in on the uh, view here. I'll go to 200%. And boy, there they are. <laughs> Isn't that much more obvious now, right? These tiny little guys. And associated with those tiny little guys are handles that allow you to adjust the shape of the curve. So there's the keyframe. If you hover over it with your cursor, you'll see that your cursor has this little uh, arrow with a diamond after it to indicate that the diamond is sort of the default uh, icon when you're working with uh, keyframes. And if you go up here a little ways, you see these little, other little dots, which I'll explain in a second. But right over here is a little black dot. And then when you hover over it, your, key, your cursor turns to a black arrow with a circle after it. That means you have now hovered over a handle. And the handle allows you to change the shape of the curve. You can draw, you can drag it like so to change the shape of the curve. And if you increase the length of the handle, then that allows you to change other characteristics of the curve, making it steeper or shallower, or making it go like so, or dropping it down. So now changing the shape of the motion using these curves. 
using these handles on the curve. The keyframes at the beginning and the end of a motion path have only one handle per keyframe. So on this other guy, let's find the handle. Can you find it? <laughs> Good luck. It's this little bitty dot right there. And there it allows you to change the shape of that motion path. And if we go up to the uh, keyframe at the center, this one has two handles. And boy, you can barely spot them, but there's one handle there. And another handle over here. Notice that as you move the handle, the other handle uh, moves in, uh, in the opposite direction. And this is what's called uh, auto bezier. But if I were to take one handle and lengthen it versus the other handle, that converts this to what's called continuous bezier. And if you right click on the center keyframe here and look at uh, spatial interpolation, you'll see that it's now been changed to continuous. Now if I were to uh, break the handle, that would make it bezier. And I break the handle by clicking on bezier. That'll break the handle. And now I can adjust each one independently. That's the difference between uh, auto bezier, continuous bezier, and bezier. So uh, I'll just undo that and keep it at continuous so that I can adjust the handle here, but still, whoops. I just didn't I didn't change it back to I'll change it back to continuous right clicking right click on you spatial and go back to continuous okay good we're back I must have done enough uh, control Zing to get back okay let's go back to that little guy so now I want to show you one more thing right now the motion is not exactly how I want it to work out I want him to stop along the way I want him to go from let's say from point A here Ireland, point B to Scandinavia, and point C to Belarus, but I want him to stop here at point B for a while and then move him down to Belarus. So how do I do that? Well, I could turn this first uh, keyframe, these first two keyframes, into hold keyframes by right-clicking on them, going to temporal interpolation and saying hold, which is fine. But if, uh, if I want to do something else later called ease in and ease out, then hold won't work. So the easiest thing to do now is just to copy and paste these keyframes here, the ones in the center, the B position, A, B, C, and copy and paste them someplace else and they'll act like a hold. So I'll right click on them, say copy. I'll move the current time indicator where I want to place those new keyframes. And when I go paste, I go Control V or Windows Command V on a Mac and that'll automatically paste them. It'll put them right there and you'll watch this guy jump back to his uh, previous position. Control V, boom. So now I've basically created a hold. Now there's one little odd thing that happens when you've got a Bezier curves when you create these p the keyframes that are the same. You get this kind of funny little shift from one keyframe to the next. It actually goes around and gets back to its starting place. It's kind of bizarre that it does that. You think it would hold it, but it doesn't because of the Bezier curves there. So the thing that you do to compensate for that is that you right, right, you select these guys, right click, change the temporal interpolation to, excuse me, Sorry. You select the position keyframes. Come on. There we go. Just the position keyframes and right click on them. Change the spatial interpolation from any kind of bezier that you've got to linear. There we go. We don't need to worry about the temporal interpolation yet. Just the spatial. So now it'll st it won't do that funny business. So now well, I've got this I still if I click on the motion path, you'll see that I still have a curve, but it kind of you know, hits this thing kind of abruptly and then goes down to the next thing and then down to the next guy. So we can still fix that. We'll fix that in a second. What I want to do now is I want to create what's called temporal interpolation. Right now this thing accelerates instantly and dece and stops instantly, decelerates instantly. It doesn't it doesn't sort of gradually speed up and gradually slow down. If I put the keyframes closer together you can see that more obviously. I'll just do it like this. It's instant acceleration, instant stop, which is not natural. You can't do that in real life unless you run your uh, car into a cliff or something. And even then, there's still a little bit of a delay in the process when you decelerate into a cliff even. So we want to make this uh, this acceleration, deceleration more natural. And the way to do that is with what's called temporal interpolation. You're changing how things behave over time, and acceleration is uh, speed over time. So we're going to uh, work with the temporal interpolation, have these guys gradually ease out of the first keyframe and ease into the second keyframe. So I'm going to right click on these two keyframes together by marquee selecting them and then right clicking on them and saying temporal interpolation, we're going to ease out. We're going to ease out of this keyframe. You could use Bezier for interpolation for uh, time as well, but ease out is much easier to do. So just click on that. And that changes the keyframe appearance to these little hourglasses. 
to say, okay, we're going to ease out of these guys. Ease out. We're still kind of smacking into the next keyframe, so I right click on those guys, select them, and right click on it, and go temporal interpolation with them. We'll ease in because we're going from this to that. And now it's going to just hold there for a while. Now I want to ease out of these keyframes. Temporal interpolation, ease out. And I want to ease into the last keyframes. Temporal interpolation, ease in. So now let's see how it's going to be a little bit more natural. It gradually comes out, gradually slows down, holds for a while. Bum, 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 bum. Hold, 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 hold. Gradually leave that, and then gradually end up down there in Belarus. So now the one little thing left to do here is that you've got this linear temporal interpolate, linear spatial interpolation for these two interior keyframes. It's, it has this nice temporal interpolation, but it still comes to this, this sort of uh, triangular shaped top, this apex that is just an angle rather than a curve. So if you go back to these guys and select them now, because we had a little issue with the funny back and forth before, we right click on this guy here and we'll have the uh, spatial interpolation go back to Auto Bezier. Right click on this guy, spatial interpolation back to Auto Bezier. There are now two keyframes here now at the same spot. If you click on this guy, that takes the out outgoing handle, click on this guy, the ingoing handle, and now we kind of have this nice curve that goes into those two, that set of two keyframes. So now it'll be much more natural motion. Let me just uh, put this back to fit. Gradually comes out, gradually slows down, holds for a while, and then gradually leaves it in a nice little curve and goes down to Belarus. There we go. Now, this little time, this time between those two keyframes, you can always say, you know, I want that to be less time between the keyframes. You can always move keyframes. The values of the keyframes won't change, just the time between them will change. So here it'll hold for a little while instead of a long time, and then take a long time to get to the next thing. It's the distance between the keyframes that determine the speed. If I were to take these last two keyframes and move them closer together, everybody's going to speed up. It'll hold for a little while, and it'll quickly speed up down to the bottom. So that's how you use keyframes and keyframe interpolation to put clips into a natural motion in Premiere Pro.